Right. Uh, are you going to settle down or not? Mm. Right. Okay, debugging session. Now, where we left it yesterday was there was obviously a problem with uh, containers that were started within the concourse pipeline, <coughs> uh, those that are managed by the worker, uh, where even though it was being started as privileged and seemed to have all the capabilities that I needed, <coughs> it wasn't uh, managing loops properly. Now, of course, the first thing to look at is how the thing was started. Uh, and the main thing I was looking for was this. Okay, so in this in this simple test setup, uh, we've only got the database back end and the concourse front end. And the concourse front end, as I understand it, is both for the web and the worker in, the, in this setup. Uh, hence it's set up as privileged so that the worker can manage uh, containers on behalf of the pipelines. Uh, so that's good, uh, but doesn't help me. Uh, so the question then becomes, well, okay, uh, where else can I look? Well, the obvious place is to actually look at the source code. Uh, but before doing that, it occurred to me uh, I can't be the first person in the world to have this problem. So let's see if we can find out. So we go over to uh, a concourse website and they have this discussion forum. So let's do a search through here for uh, mount container. Uh, and uh, okay, so it doesn't route. No, we don't. Uh, mount attempt file system. That's fairly straightforward because it doesn't. Ah, here we go. Exposing dev loot devices in privileged mode. And try and task where I need a loopback device to manipulate raw disk images. Ooh, right. Okay, so this is exactly the problem we're having. Uh, and I found the answer by looking at what Concourse do in our own CI. So based on blah blah blah. Okay, so the important part of this, so it does it does a whole load of pre-checks to make sure we're actually inside a container, and it's looking. So it makes this temp device C groups directory and then checks and says it tries to mount it as a type C group uh, uh, okay And then permit our C group to do everything with all devices. Ignore failure in the case something has already done this. Uh, echo appears to return the inval possibly because devices this effect are already in use. Right, so it basically sets this device as allow to be A. Okay. So the obvious caveat to that, caveat? No, corollary, is, okay, what is all that about? So let's do a search for C groups, uh, devices allow, devices Allow, what's that one about? Yeah, that's on a block device to a container. <clears throat> Allowing C group devices for uh, C groups, hardware pass through explain. Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so. Hmm. 
Presumably A is for all, where B is for block. Allow any, make no type, but not reading and writing. Okay, allow, so B is block devices, C I assume is character devices. So I assume A is all. Uh, So it, it looks like it's this device is allowed, which is the issue. And that makes sense because we saw devices being sort of filtered. Yeah. Uh, so in, in, when we landed the container ourselves, directly into our Docker, we got all the loopback devices and in fact all the other devices uh, that we expected. And when we did it inside the uh, sorry when we intercepted the container created by the worker for concourse we got a very limited set and I'm guessing that that's because block devices weren't permitted so uh, if we just try this uh, so how are we going to do this if we look at uh, Now, it won't be in the pipeline. Uh, we want to add it really to uh, I assume to the Pi Builder. Now, we don't want to put it in Patch Pi, and we, won't, we don't want it in Unzip and Patch. So, really, what we want to do is create another utilities uh, script. So, let's call this utilities.shell. In fact, let's call it. Uh, mm, CI utilities. CI utilities? Hmm. Let's call it. Uh, let's just call it utility. Uh, utilities got a class with it. I suppose it's it's going to be in, not. It's going to be container utilities. Okay and. It's basically going to be, oops, uh, oh come on Mark, finger trouble, hello, oh, no, there we go, um, do I, um, actually I don't want that intro do I, okay, and now we're going to copy everything from here, Because all, all I wanted to do really is define these fun this function. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, ooh, that's not very nice, is it? Uh, uh, this is very tiresome, uh, and I don't have an auto formatter in here. So, uh, hmm. Not very tiresome. Okay, so we'll do a uh, beginning to the end of the full. Oops, not in there. Uh, so uh, beginning to the end of the ball, substitute anything in the beginning, any number of white spaces. Uh, Right, so let's flatten that out now. Uh, I can at least make it look reasonably sensible. Uh, Uh, 
Contain the utilities is just going to be invoked. Uh, I guess we need it in here, don't we? Uh, so Now that just sources it, and having got it in here, uh, we now call that permit device control. Um, Okay, so that should that should do it. Um, Okay, uh, so that's the Pi Builder. So I want to uh, add the unzip and the container. Good. Uh, I could run the build and intercept this and then clutch it in, couldn't I? Just to test it. Shall we do that? Yeah, let's, let's do that before I go doing anything like this. Uh, so, what I need to do is run the build and run the intercept at the same time in the same time uh, so let's uh, kick off kick off the build and then right so we run the intercept uh, hopefully, we'll now be able to uh, run the Pi Patch tools. But before we do that, if I just do uh, mm, Okay, and it was called Commit Device Control. So if I now call Commit Device Control, and with a bit of luck, although this board will have failed, uh, if I now run PatchPy manually, so 
Uh, it's in. You want to run Pi Patch Tools Patch Pi and it's Pi Patch Image. Still getting operation not permitted. Well, that's not very happy, is it? So let's just see whether we've got those loops in there. Ooh. All right. Interesting. Why? Why is that right? Not right. Why is that? Right there, invalid argument. <clears throat> Something's obviously going pear shape.
Uh, we tried that creative we might know. So what it gives. It's still creating them, these nodes. Mm. Uh.
So, still failing. <clears throat> Why? What am I doing wrong? Right. Echo, da 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 da. He does the echo. Uh, so not devices. Oh. Look, devices mounted. <laughs> device subsystems equal devices. Uh, local devices subdirectory equal docker blah 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 uh, so we create this cboot directory What is going on there? Local devices sub local devices subdirectory. So if the secret directory devices subdirectory oops mm -hmm. let's try that again shall we So the devices subsystems, so the devices subdirectory is a docker subdirectory. So we're looking for Right, so it's not that one, it is the docker, uh, and I think it was that 2a. Um, 
There's more to this. This creates some pretty high value uh, nodes. So it creates these nodes. And it's doing all of this before it invokes. This is obviously being invoked as a sub. Process. And okay. So does that mean that having run that, we still need to create some at least one scratch node and why is it creating a symbolic link I mean, that's weird isn't it well uh, okay so uh, let's give it a go uh, Now then, what does it do? It, it also sets the low setup. Um, okay, so what does this do? Does this, does this just clear these artificial loop devices? On exit. Uh, I suppose we need to do all of these steps, don't we? Okay. Uh, okay. Oops. Uh, right, so we also want the function uh, Oh no, what are you doing? Uh, right, okay, four. Create these so uh, they're out of the way. Well, they, they, they create them at 64 through 67. So let's just do the same thing. And uh, we do make nod um, 660 to scratch loop 
dollar Alright, I've locked the voice seven and turn away and then we link that in. Uh, uh, we link that device. And we link that to dev loop. All right. Uh, come on, Mark. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh. Right, so that creates the lead divs, and then we want function, let's just call it clear lead divs. Okay. All that does is for i in the same sequence. Sets up the device to basically disconnect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that just disconnects it and all of this, just make sure that we don't get any shite on our output. Okay. And ignore any errors. Okay. So those are our utilities. If we call permit device control there, and then we call create loop devs there, and does this have an exit hand already? No, so we can add an exit handler. And that exit handler will just say trap and it's clear loop devs. So we trap to clear the loop devs whenever we exit. Okay. So now, what happens if we do this on zip again? Uh, create loop, uh, create loops, dev, because I'm an idiot. Uh. Ah, God. Right. Oh. 
Okay, so although we allow ourselves to get control, we still need to do the make node because uh, giving ourselves control of the devices doesn't actually give us access to the existing devices. So we create some spare ones so that, fingers crossed, when the mount comes along, boom. Good God, I think we've done it. Um, I'll just go back up. Look at that, our mount works. Okay, so if I've understood this correctly, and I think I have, Oh, we first have to give our C group, that is the container, uh, we have to give that uh, the ability to control the devices, and that's what the uh, uh, devices to allow allows this Docker image access so we're, we're being a bit naughty because what we're doing is we're saying well, okay we're, we're running as a privileged device okay uh, sorry we're running as a privileged container which gives us access to the file system on which we're running so we look up the directory uh, for the docker the docker container that we're currently running as okay uh, which is this uh, 2a whatever uh, so we look up that and we we get its devices dot allow and we echo a into that which basically says give us allow all devices to be controlled by this container that doesn't give us access to the underlying uh, loop devices but it does allow us to create them so we create three or four uh, as an entirely uh, we create them in the 60s because I guess uh, that keeps them out of the way because um, generally speaking we, we may have eight loop devices on the underlying host uh, so we assume that we're never going to have like 60 odd loot devices on the underlying host. So we say, right, okay, create them well out of the way. Uh, so we create those loot devices, which then makes those loot devices available to the mount command. So the mount command now, when, it's, when it goes to do a mount, uh, by default, it will look up the first free loot device and assign that when we mount. Okay, that allows the mount to proceed. Uh, and then once we're done with all of that, and we've done the dismount and all of that, uh, we just clean up after ourselves by uh, uh, by deleting the loop devices, which makes it nice and clean. So I think, uh, yeah, right, okay, we've still got loop devices in there, I guess. Uh, I guess that's because we don't uh, that uh, uh, low setup minus D must do it doesn't seem to delete them uh, it detaches them right okay well that makes sense okay so it detaches them, but it throws away any errors, so that if they're not actually attached to anything, which they shouldn't be, because we've done the unmount, which should free up the device, but we we just make sure that they're not hanging on to anything. Cool. So what we need to do now is put that into the real script, and we're, we're good to go. Okay, so we now just need to redo all of that. Uh, so we need to expand the container utilities so it's not just that function it's also the uh, uh, the create loop devs uh, we can actually 
we could make this a little bit better, couldn't we? Because instead of just creating an arbitrary number, uh, I suppose we could take a base uh, uh, we could do a a, a, a base Do we really want to go to all that trouble? Let's just, because we, we know how many we're going to need in this particular application. Mm, uh, uh, a bit of me says it should be generalized, another bit of me says just making things more complicated. Okay, let's just uh, do it the debug free way for now. So we're going to create this scratch loop devices uh, and that block devices. I think that's type seven. That's just an index, uh, and then we link that into. Uh, so we link that scratch device into. Uh, the loop devices area. Okay, so that's that. And then we want the function to clear loop tabs. Okay, and this is a much simpler based. Uh, which basically goes for i in the sequence 64 through 67 to right and now we're just doing this uh, hello setup detach slash do slash loop i and we're sending the output to dev null and then any errors uh, okay uh, any errors are directed back to standard in standard in is sent to dev null so we're just throwing them all away any return code is just ignored done and done okay that looks right kill okay so now now then all, all of these uh really uh, all of this is complaining about quoting which is yeah, it's, it's valid let's let's tidy that up uh All right. Uh, so we don't need the function keyword. Uh, uh, actually, I suppose I could say. Uh, separately hmm, okay so that just demands that we do something like that uh, now it says useless k 
chat. Uh, that's big the question. Why have they done that? Why have they done that? Why not just do the grip? Uh, I'm slightly mystified. Why are they doing a cat and then gripping the output when they could just have gripped directly on the file? Surely. Surely you just do grip. Um, directly on the file, can't you? Reason for not doing that? Looks fine to me. All right, and we've got the same issue here. Uh, where uh, so we want to go uh, what are we doing
hopefully. Uh, do I need to do anything? No, because they're being mounted as the inputs on this Pi Patch Builder. So, uh, what should happen is it should fetch those as part of the Pi Patch tools, inputs to this, and this patch image should, fingers crossed, work. Okay, evidently I should have been more careful. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, I should definitely have been more careful. Uh, and Embarrassing? Is that really how you spell embarrassing? Mm, let's just not try to be clever. Eh? Okay. We'll talk about Git workflow because evidently this is all quick and dirty uh, and it needs significant work because. All of this should really be being done on a dev branch. We shouldn't be doing this on a, what is effectively a production branch. All right. So we're fetching the pie patch tools. We've got the new one. And... All right. Now we're seeing whether I've got another freaking typo. I suppose what I could have done actually is I could have intercepted that and just rerun it after a minor edit. But, yeah. Let's see how we get on. Ooh, look at that. Boom. Yes, it worked. What a hero. I'm sorry, did I disturb you? <laughs> right, okay, so we've got a working build. Uh, we should be producing uh, an output, uh, but of course the output's not showing up because we're not doing anything with it. Now, what shall we do? Right, now then, th this brings us on to talking about what to do with this stuff. Now, of course, this could feed straight into the next part of the system, which is to... Uh, take that image and feed it into the uh, uh, the pie builder container which would then allow us to run in the scripts which we are going to do but i think it makes sense to take this patched image and store it in our own repository so that uh, this will get executed now basically whenever a new pi image becomes available so we're gonna to have to say to it how often we want it to poll for a new pi image and, you know once a day will be plenty uh, so whenever they produce a new raspbian image okay we want this to trigger and to produce a new artifact somewhere uh, that uh, 
and, th and that artifact will then, uh, when it's updated, should trigger any downstream activities. But we don't really need, because we might have, you know, oops, sorry, mate. we might have a lot of downstream builds uh, that will rely on our patched binary. Uh, we don't want them all in this one pipeline. We want to be able to say, well, okay, we've got this uh, patched binary um, that can be used whenever. Yeah? So we, we really just want to decouple. Oops. Uh, we just want to decouple. Uh, where are we? Here we go. So, so basically what I'm saying is uh, we've got this... Uh, We've got here, uh, we've got the, the raw eye image, okay, uh, and we are mangling that with our patch, okay. Now we could just take, uh, you know, we, we could, uh, so, so our pipeline Okay, starts there. Okay, Ooh, and of course I've done it so you can't see it, but yeah, nobody cares. Uh, so basically, we've got a pipeline that runs in along here. Okay, so our patch is, is producing this patched image. All right, and we could immediately, uh, you know, we could have uh, further processing going on, okay, for let's say, you know, Pi version A, and we could have another one for Pi version B, another one for Pi version C, and so on. Yeah, all of these would have different sets of scripts uh, being run into this common Pi patch, okay, so this would produce the Pi A image. And this one will produce the pi b you get the idea okay so we could just have a single pipeline that would take that image as input into each of these sub builds if you like that strikes me as being a bit daft what we should do is each of these should be their own pipeline yeah. And it should start with this patched image. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're saying, well, okay, take take that take that starting image uh, uh, from our own repository. Okay. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to set up artifactory. Okay, uh, and we're going to say, right, when you build this patch image put it into Artifactory, and that'll be it. Okay, so this entire pipeline, the first pipeline, will just basically start when the Pi image is updated, as it is now. It will run the build, and it will put it into our repository, which in this case will be an Artifactory repository. Okay, then each of the downstream pipelines will just refer to artifactory okay yeah, so, so none of the, none of this will be going on yeah all we're going to do is uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, rubbish in there need a great big Dip, uh, right. So none of these will will exist. Okay. And all we're going to do is we're going to take straight from Artifactory. Okay. Hello. Oh, come on. Uh, and go straight into each of these. Like that. What? Oh, diagrams are awesome. Okay. So 
the, the point being that we're separating this out okay so we'll have we'll have instead of having one pipeline to produce all of the downstream images we'll have one to produce the patch image and then we'll have one two three four five however many results we have and those might be manual builds or they might be triggered by an update to artifactory uh, or they could be sourced from another place um, they could be triggered by other things um, so you know it could be uh, you know, each of them would be triggered by their own scripts for example so we would keep the pipelines nice and tight basically uh, because this pipe this patch image is only going to be updated once in a while whenever a new raspberry image comes out what, what's more we might not want to update every single downstream yeah uh, it could be that we hit a problem one day uh, where for example pi b uh, doesn't respond well to the updated raspbian yeah we might be implementing something on pi b image uh, that requires version you know uh, 15 of the patched image uh, and then 16 comes along and breaks that build so rather than constantly have it being broken we simply say that okay the pi build will always now use the 15 base image uh, uh, until we fix the problem yeah, so by decoupling it like this we can actually do that we can say to the pi b go to artifactory and always use 15 don't use the latest nice okay uh, hopefully that makes sense so what we need to do now is think about artifactory so if we go in here uh, let's clean up some of this don't know all this stuff about capabilities anymore because we have solved the problem hurrah and lashings of ginger beer uh, we don't need the git resource ah right okay so we've got the artifactory resource here which i've been using for my examples uh, of how to do check in and out right um so artifactory is by jfrog uh, and uh, we are going to be lazy again because this is just a proof of concept uh, and we don't need uh, we don't need much by way of uh, robustness or availability so all we're going to do is we're going to use the shortcut uh, for producing this uh, and hopefully there we go single node docker compose that looks like the business so we just take the compressed archive uh, run the script Really? Oh, that seems very complicated. Uh, Docker Compose using Docker Volumes. Create an artifact with home directory as an empty system, blah, blah, blah. Customize the product configuration, which is optional. Ah, oh, that's more like it. We just want to create this really simple. Uh, that looks like it. Okay, so we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this Docker installation. Yeah, we'll keep it really simple. Okay, so this is, <laughs> this is really quick and dirty, but it's only it's only for playing around with. So, okay, so we want to go to uh, uh, our root home directory. We've already got our concourse in there, so let's make directory. That's called JFrog. Okay, uh, so apparently 
we want to create uh, uh, we want to create jfrog artifactory jfrog artifactory slash var slash etc and we want to cd to that directory okay dokey uh, we then want to create an empty oh, could have done that system dot yaml file ah uh, it's called dot yaml okay and then we want to churn minus capital R 10 30 10 30 uh, and uh, right customize the product configuration well we're not going to do anything and then we've got a great big long docker run command so we'll just copy that into uh ah now i didn't ah okay this relies on jfrog home being defined so let's export jfrog home as um, Uh, home frog yeah so now we should just be able to run that mm, 81 and 82 that should be okay shouldn't it Ooh. back in a minute oh <laughs> okay, you dumbass. Uh, it's the OSS version we want. Alright. Let's see what happens. Right. Now with a bit of luck. Ah, one thing we probably are gonna have to customize uh, is is the fact that uh Okay, that's good. Now I'm willing to bet. So if I look at the system, not YAML now. Hmm. We need to set the URL because this is gonna be so wrong when it's done. All the redirects will probably go to localhost. Yeah. We know it is to eighty eighty two. Uh but I'm willing to bet. Mm 
Oh, must contain it. Okay. Uh, ah, here we go. So uh, we want it to be. Uh, it's got to be one nine two one six eight thirty three one one. Uh, now then, assume eighty eighty two. Do we need the what number properly? Here we go. Mm, doesn't like it. Okay, maybe it's expecting. Ah, don't need a proxy. Uh, we just want a generic repository. Generic local. Okay. And there are no packages. Pretty much to be expected, I guess. So now I'm not entirely clear how this works. But oh, we'll see. Right, so we need to extend our pipeline. Uh, uh, okay, so the pipeline is going to use a new resource. In particular, it's going to use this artifactory resource. Uh, now there are two. Uh, Will actually integrate your pipeline just artifact repositories. So do we want this one? Uh, host API key repository ID group ID artifact ID. Oh this is Maven. Uh, okay. Does that mean does that mean it's limited to Maven? Uh, Where's this one? And there we go. Uh, repository API key version strategy. And Okay. Hmm. All right. Let's try this one. So let's say it's a resource type and uh, my name is Might as well just follow the pattern that's set up here. So generic artifact type is going to be now they say Docker image, but let's stick with registry image, which I understand is the more up to date. Then we need the source, which is going to be repository. Repository. Uh, okay. Troy Kinsella. Uh, uh, 
slash concourse dash artifactory. Uh, resource and tag latest why not okay so now we need a new resource and we will call it uh, let's go of type generic artifact which we've just defined uh, and now the configuration for that requires us to put in a URL which will be Repository will be generic local because we've just created that. Uh, API key we will get in just a second. Uh, and the path will be, uh, let's just call it. Pi. I guess. Now, API key, I'm assuming I get that from here. Security seems like a good place. No. Okay, how about settings? Uh, security settings. Uh, password connection, password expiration, mm, nope, none of that looks promising. Uh, services, settings, no. Backups, ah. Settings, security, revoke API keys. Good. So how do I get an API? How basic we need to know that. API key management. Okay, so I can revoke API keys for all users. Can I therefore get a new one? Uh, do I get a new one from here? Do I get it specifically for Identity and access, access tokens, generic admin token, mm. users, admin, permissions, permission targets, no, right, do I get it on a repository by repository basis? Generic local. Post. No. Okay. Uh, there's keys for an SSH server. Hmm. Okay. Revoke API keys for all users. That does kind of suggest Aha, API key. Use to authentic and using the REST API. Cool. To use the API key add the following header. So the REST API, yeah, whatever. 
Uh, and the important point is current password, right? Um, okay, click to generate a key. Click on generate to create a key. There we go. So that's created the key, and now that presumably copies it. Uh, it doesn't seem like I have to save it. So over here, and given that this is only a test system, oops. I don't care if you can see the key because <laughs> this is this is a local test system right uh, so that should be the setup now the patched pie do I need to create that first I've got the repository Uh, the layout is simple default. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what that means. Uh, okay, so go back here into the dashboard. Uh, that's pointless. Artifactory. Here we go. Packages, builds, and artifacts. So the artifacts. So I've got generic local. Uh, set me up. What does that let me do? Uh, Target far path. Alright, let's continue on. So, uh, where are we? In here, so within the job, here we go. That sets up an archive source, but we can put to the artifact, which is our resource, files to publish. That's obviously, I assume, a path. <laughs> right. Okay, so what is the path? There we go. So the single file path supplied a single file in files path parameter having a base name of source path will be published to Uh, 
from the source repository. So uh, so we put so how we built this. Uh, we don't have outputs anymore, do we? Because we, uh, it's just going to be a put. Sorry, it's not a task. It's a put. Uh, put will be a pie patched image. image. Thing we want to put to is hmm, the artifact, isn't it? Okay, and the parameters for that are the files we actually want to output. The only we don't we don't want anything complicated, do we? Mm -hmm. Pi patched image slash file system image. I mean, that's it. That's, that's the only file we want. Do we need to specify anything more than that? Let's look up uh, builds. So, tasks, jobs. Uh, resources. Uh, tasks. It's not really a task. It's not. It's not a task. It's a, it's put. So, lots of examples we get, but where's the examples put? Uh, config basics. Uh, yeah, yeah, blah blah blah. Environment variables. None of that's interesting. Version of internals build. Rerunning a build. Nope. Jobs.
footstep. Oh, uh, params. Arbitrary object. So no help there. It must be actually built into this. That. Uh, yeah. A single file supplied in files path. Uh, now we do need to make sure that it's versioning uh, the version strategy which is specified as part of the resource. Right. Oops. So we need to make sure that as part of the resource. Okay, we specify its version strategy. Uh, version underscore strategy is going to be single four. Okay, and the path, it would appear, needs to be a full path. In this context. So. What was the command to check the pipeline? Okay, so that sets a pipeline. Show pipeline. Was it? Uh, was it a particular form of set pipeline? Validate. Uh, looks good. Cool. Uh, what the heck? Yes. And the configuration has been updated. So now we go back to here. And now, dun dun da, we've got an output. Okay, so let's run it. See what happens. Now, it won't do a huge amount because nothing has changed on the inputs. Interesting, why is it running a patch image? Ah, oh, it's because, of course, it's never created an output. Interesting, put artifact, get artifact. Why is that a thing? Seems a bit old. Okay, oh, we need to take that minus X off. Is it actually doing anything? Oh, yes, it's failing. Right, so 
da, 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 da. out change directory to temp build put I press the image system image not a directory okay why would it be Uh, right, so this is where that output map comes in, isn't it? Uh, this is why we don't specify output because, of course, we're not, we want this output mapping. Uh, so we need to see how this output mapping works so uh, output mapping And it doesn't mention output mapping at all. Okay, not helpful. Task step output mapping. There we go. Output name. So a map from task output names. Uh, uh, Okay. We don't need no. We don't need that, do we? What we need to do is figure out what what's what. So we've only got one. It's going to arrive in unzip is going to put that into pipatched image. Okay, and this our put artifact is going to take the pipatched image and put it into. into the artifact so why doesn't it like that it's saying that it can't go into the build put my patched image well of course not because 
I patched the image. Mm -hmm. Is relative to whatever this temp build OC blah blah blah. So we've written the output to that output. Why is it now looking in this build put? I don't understand. Well, it should be looking surely on this build 075 blah blah blah. Why is it decided? Hmm. Oh, it's also, this file system is not an image, but well, of course not. Okay, so... Word? I thought that we specified the entire... Uh, I thought when it was a single file, path to our directory containing the files to be published. Okay, so that's that. And if it's a single file, then the files path parameter having the base name. Oh, I, oh, okay. Kachin penny drops. Okay. So it looks in that directory. Although even that sounds seems wrong, but it, it looks in that. Okay, so it looks in that directory for the file with the base name of this path, which of course is file system dot image, and that is what gets published to path by file system image under the source repository. In, okay, okay, that kind of makes sense. Uh, so that makes sense. I still don't quite understand why that error message was looking for put. To build put. Uh, let's lock it and see. Yes. 
still don't understand why you got put get. Because mm. we're not doing a get. Unless get is done as a part of the put, perhaps. Okay, we'll find out in a minute. Now the startup times on these containers is a bit of a concern for big builds, but then again, we're running on a virtual machine and uh, we're not running exactly uh, a high performance system. It's certainly taking its time. Oh, right, so what happened? Uh, the requested URL returned a 404. So, publishing editing generic local patched by file system image. Right. Okay. Uh, is that. I mean, you kind of expect a, I mean, a slash artifactory generic local. Oh, okay. Okay, so you do need artifactory on there. Uh, so, uh, where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. So that needs to be slash artifactory. Come on, I'm quick. Reset the pipeline. Yes. I'm sorry, was I not doing enough belly rubbing? Mm. Uh, right, so that hopefully is corrected. That. And away we go again. Another tedious wait. I have to say, this is one of the curses of doing this sort of thing. It's often a case of hurry up and wait. Uh, you're doing an awful lot of repetitive stuff sometimes when you're trying to debug this stuff. Uh, and when you've got processes that take time, you can spend a lot of time sitting around just waiting for things to happen. That said, it's always a good time to you know, read do a bit of studying, check up on stuff that you're still thinking about because you, you're very rarely working on just one problem, particularly in a work environment. You'll often have more than one thing going on, so you can sort of kick off a a, a build like this, uh, leave it running, go off and uh, work on I don't know updating um, you know, websites or whatever, uh, and then come back to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and check it later. Yeah, you get a feel for how long these things are going to take. So if, they, you know, if you get an idea that this takes two or three minutes to run, then you go off and do a, a two or three minute job, update your timesheets or <laughs> whatever. Uh, you know, deal with some email. Yeah. Frankly, sitting around for a few minutes isn't too bad. When you start building uh, large systems, uh, you know, you can be sitting around for minutes or hours even. Well, I'll say sitting around. Uh, the jobs can be running for minutes or hours. Uh, and uh, they may not need minute to minute monitoring. So you might as well make use of that time. Uh, clear your inbox or Write a document. Oh, hello. We're actually doing something. Look at that. It's uploading. It's a, it's a big old image. You know, 1.7 gig. So we're probably going to have to do some work on that. Maybe recompressing the image or something. Uh, before we upload it. So as part of our patch image, maybe we look into recompressing the image 
something zipping it perhaps now the downside to zipping it before putting it into the repository is that all the downstream activities they have to unzip it each time so mm, swings and roundabouts maybe do some tests oh look at that so I think maybe it does the get a to confirm that it's uploaded but also uh, yeah partly to make sure it's, it's good but also because if you've got any downstream activities from from that um, the artifact box then obviously they're going to need it but it's a bit overkill there we go so we've now got a green build huzzah Hey, what are you adding to that, Kenny? Mm, isn't that good? Now we can go to our artifacts uh, and let's just reload that. And hopefully, hopefully, we've got a new artifact in here. Look at that. Patched pie file system dot image. Boom. And in actual fact, the, uh, the artifactory will use this uh, char value. Uh, I think it uses 256. It does say in the documentation, doesn't it? Uh, here we go. Uh, so the check on a single file checks the char 256 sum uh, of the configured file and treats it as the version. Which means that we won't be doing a lot of redundant rubbish. Uh, uh, and all of our oh, careful don't you step on my keyboard what well, you're getting fidgety because it's around about dinner time well it's a good place to break in it because we're, we're basically done for the day hey. right we'll go and get you some dinner right so that's it for another day uh, i will see you in the next session i guess and what should we do in the next session uh i guess we'll look at one of the downstream pipelines which we've now decoupled from this uh, oh actually we do need to update this pipeline don't we because we need to add a trigger because uh, we need to we need to sample it once a day so we'll add that and then we'll create a pipeline to do something with this patched uh, artifact okay well, i'll see you then